Hello everyone, let's find a power series representation for this L1 function here. Um, to find the power series representation for this L1 function, we are still going to use that uh, the power, the geometric power series. And to do that, let's just recall that first because we can keep that on the side for reference. And so we are going to start by having, right? So x to the n is equal to one over, okay? One over what? One over one minus x, where absolute value of the x is less than one, okay? And now, if we just look at the Allen function, it doesn't seem like it's related to this one over one minus x, but there is actually a way to um, build a connection between this Allen function and the one over one minus x, which is to take the derivative of this Allen function and see what's going on. So let's do that. Let's try that and see what's going on here. So let's say we are taking the derivative of this function, which is f prime, right? So when we take the derivative, we get f prime, and that's going to give us what? One over, right? So to see that that's where the connection comes from. And then we have one over, right? We have four minus x. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is negative like one. And so if you rewrite this function in the more simplified form, then you can write it as negative. And then one over four minus X. Okay, so you know that the negative one is really just um, a constant that's in front of this function right here. So, I mean, in front of this function right here. So it, we don't need to worry about it. We do have the one in the numerator, um, but we, there is a problem here. There is a four here in the denominator, but we have we should be getting a one in in this form so that we can actually use this um, uh, the formula right here. So how do we actually turn this four into a one? We can actually factor the four. So we, we still got to do more work on here. So we factor the four. If we factor the four, then it's just going to give us the one right now, right? As you can see here, four times one is equal to four. So we get the one here and then minus. And then what do we get in here? We are going to get something times four will give us the X. And that something must be, what do we get here? It's going to be X over four. So let's check. Four times one is four. Four times negative x over four is negative x. And so that works. And then of course we can just keep all that outside the function so that um, you can think of it as factoring. So it will be negative one over four. Yeah, so the, the negative one over four, the negative sign comes from here and then the one over four will just be that one over four. And then now we can write the function as what? We can write the function as one over and then we have what what is that that's one minus x over four and so now as you can see we do we do have uh, a part of the whole function that's in the form of this sum for the geometric power series. And so what can we do? We can replace the X by X minus four, and then we can turn it into a series by changing this X into X minus four. So let's do that. So if we are doing that, then we are going to get negative one over four. And then now the series. Okay, and then we are going to get x raised to the n power. In this case, what is x? It's going to be x over four. Yeah, so now we turn our f prime into a series. We found a, a power series representation for the f prime. Um, but that's not the answer for the f because we're actually finding what a power series representation for the Allen function, not the f prime. Right, but we are going to do something to get back to this Ln function. So what do we do? Uh, let's try to simplify this first. Okay, so if we are simplifying this, we are going to 
get like the one over four and then summation let's see what do we get here distributing the n power to the x and the one over four we are going to get x to the n okay and then we are going to get the uh, four to the n And then continuing with the simplifying here, we can actually move this 1 over 4 or the negative 1 over 4 in here. But it's up to you whether you want to move the negative uh, 1. We can move the 1 over 4 in here so that it becomes x to the n. Okay. In the denominator, we are going to get something that's that looks different from before. So uh, this is 4 to the n, and then we are multiplying the denominator by another factor of 4. So we have n plus 1 as the its exponent. Yeah, so that's the that's the simplified form for the f prime. Now the question is, how do we go back to the original function f? This is for f prime. This is for just this negative one over four minus x. And then how do we how do we go from f prime to f? All we need to do is to integrate this, right? If we integrate this f prime, then we are going to get back to the original function f. So let's do that. Now we are going to do the integration. Now we integrate. Now we consider this, okay, so we can put the minus sign on the outside. This minus sign comes from this right here. And then we have the summation of the n equals zero, right? And then we are going to get x to the n and then just four the n plus one and then dx. Yeah, so let's look at this one. Um, how do we integrate based on the theorem about uh, integrating the power series? We can actually integrate turn by turn, right? So we can we can write it as negative. Okay, so <clears throat> if we are integrating turn by turn, then we are actually just integrate each term first, and then we sum up all the turns. So now we can put the integral on the inside. We get n plus 1 here, and then dx. OK, so now what are we getting here? We have negative summation n equals 0. And then we are going to, now remember, x is our variable here. The n is really just being treated as some number right now. So the 1 over 4 to the n plus 1, that's really just a constant. So we are really just dealing with this x to the n. So in that case, we are going to be getting what? We are going to be getting x to the n plus 1 because we are integrating, right? So when we are integrating, we need to add 1 to the power. And then we are going to get, we need to divide by that same power. So that's really just n, n plus 1. This is really just doing the power rule. And then that 4 to the n plus 1, that's really just a coefficient. So we don't touch that. So this 4 n plus 1. And then there is a constant c that we have here. And then actually remember that the c is not part of the series. So we actually um, just to make things clear, we can write it in this form so that you, we know that the C is not included in the series. Okay, so now how do we find um, this constant right here? We can try plugging in a, um, a number in there to to make it work. And so what is a good number that we can plug in there? We can plug in x equals um, 0 in here, right? So let's try plugging in x equals 0 in here and see what's going on. So if we are plugging in 0, then f is going to be what? L1 of 4. 
So now we know that this, when we integrate the f prime, then we're going to get back to f. So we know that this is actually our function, right? So this is actually our function. This is actually our function, original function, the ln function. And so, yeah, instead of writing f, we can actually write it as ln of 4 minus x. This is actually this is our original function, right? Okay, now, what do we do? We can plug 0 into x, and then, so that means we're going to plug the 0 in here, then we can figure out what the c is. So, let's say we let x be 0, then what happens to this here this all this stuff will become what you just plug zero into the x and then that whole thing disappears right no matter what n is then this is always going to be zero so you get the c is equal to what and then you plug the zero in here then you're going to get l1 of four so c is equal to l1 of four and so Okay, now have the final conclusion here. Um, the power series representation for f is equal to this series right here plus the L1 of 4, which is the C. And so we have, um, let's just put the C in the front. So we get L1 of 4 minus. Now don't forget that there was a minus sign right here. And then we have, we have this. We need a longer fraction line, I think. And then we finish. Okay, so this is how this works. So sometimes we have a function that's not in the form of um, this one over one minus x. And it's for certain functions, then it will be possible for us to either take the derivative of this um, or integrate that function so that we can get a function that's in this form. And then from there, we can actually turn it into a power series and then we reverse the process. So if we initially uh, differentiated the function to get it into this one over one minus x form, then we actually need to integrate to get back to the original function. And if we initially uh, integrated the function to get it into this one minus one over one minus x form, then we need to differentiate to get it back to the original function. Okay, so that's it for this problem here. And then, and then um, let me see what else do I need to talk about here. Uh, the radius is conversion is going to be the same, right, as the um, original function. So as you have seen in the theorem about the turn by turn differentiation and integration, whatever the um, the radius of convergence is for this series right here, then the radius for convergence wouldn't be the same for that one. So I actually didn't do anything to the um, for finding the radius of convergence right here. And right now I can quickly just do it. Uh, let's look at, let's because we have no information about the radius of convergence for the f, right? So what we can do is that we can look at the f prime. Because we already know that um, for the f prime, the radius of convergence would be given by x over 4, and then put it inside the absolute value less than 1, right? So let's just write that extra information down here. Let me see what color should I use. What is a good color that I can use here just to distinguish? Let me try the... Uh, and try the, yeah, the blue color right here. So now let's see what's going on here. So we know that for um, our f prime here, then we are going to get what? Absolute value of x over four. That's going to be less than one, right? Because we're, instead of having x, we have x over four. So we have that. And then do you see what's going on here? We are going to, we are going to get what? We are going to get um, 1 over 4 absolute value of x. We can take the 1 over 4 on the outside, less than 1. And then we actually will have absolute value of x that's less than 4. 
So you can see that the um, radius of convergence would be four. And so now um, if we integrate, then it doesn't really change our radius of convergence, right? So that means for this series right here, our original function, then the radius of convergence would also be four. Okay, so now that's good. Okay, so um, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and then give me some support. Thank you for watching.